Pesticides are important to agriculture to help grow food and fiber and are effective when they are used correctly. But as with every chemical, you cannot take them for granted. For example, the household cleaner such as bleach or ammonia you might use in your home to help keep you and your family healthy. However, you wouldn't want your skin to come in contact with them and you wouldn't want to breathe their fumes because they might make you sick. The same is true with pesticides. They will help fight plant illness and disease, but you don't want to breathe their fumes or get them on your skin. This video will show general pesticide safety practices and give information to help you feel more confident around pesticides. The last portion of this video pertains to pesticide handlers, so if you're not a handler, you may end the video at that point. Pesticide Basics First, let's understand some basics about pesticides. Simply put, pesticides are chemicals that control pests. Pesticides can control insects, weeds, or plant diseases. Pesticides work in different ways. They can stop pest growth, affect pest reproduction, act as a barrier against the pests, or kill pests. Pesticides are applied as powder or granules, liquid or sprays, or gas. When pesticides dry, they dry as a powder. This powder is what is referred to as residue. The residue is not always visible, so don't assume that pesticide residue isn't present if you don't see it. Where can pesticides be found, and how do I avoid them? Pesticides can be found on plants, on soil, in irrigation water and equipment, in storage areas or mixing and loading areas, on harvested crops, and even on your clothes. Sometimes a breeze can cause pesticides to drift from where they're being applied, so it's possible to find pesticides in areas beyond the targeted area. How to protect yourself. There are many ways you can protect yourself from coming into contact with pesticides. First, wear clean work clothes every day that completely covers your skin. You should wear long pants and long-sleeved shirts and shoes and socks. Wash your hands and face before you eat drink, smoke, chew gum or tobacco, or use the toilet. Don't carry gum, food, or cigarettes in your pockets because they could absorb pesticides. Don't wipe your forehead, eyes, nose, or mouth with your shirt sleeves. Stay away from areas where pesticides are being applied or where drift may occur. Never drink or wash in irrigation water. Drink only the fresh water that is provided by your employer for drinking. Obey posted warning signs, restricted entry intervals, and do not enter areas that your supervisor tells you are unsafe to enter. The warning signs will have the words danger, peligro, and pesticides, pesticides, in large letters at the top. When warning signs are required, they will be posted at the entrance of treated areas. All pesticides have a restricted entry interval, REI. The REI is the amount of time that must pass after a pesticide application before you're allowed back in the area to continue working there. The REI can be as little as four hours to as much as three days and depends on the pesticide. Only early entry workers who've been trained and who wear the required PPE may enter the treated area during an REI. Never take pesticides or pesticide containers home. Pesticides used at work are not made for home use. Empty pesticide containers still contain pesticides in very small amounts, even after they've been rinsed out. After work, wash your entire body and hair with plenty of soap and water. Put on clean clothes. Store and wash your dirty work clothes separate from your family laundry, and don't wear them again until they've been cleaned. Wash your dirty work clothes in the hottest water available and use strong soap. Bleach and ammonia are not good at removing some pesticides. When you're through washing work clothes, run the washer a full cycle without any clothes to remove remaining residue. If someone else washes your work clothes for you, be sure to tell them that your work clothes may have pesticides on them and that they should wear extra protection, such as rubber gloves, when handling them. Why it's important to protect yourself. There are four ways pesticides can enter your body through the pores of your skin, or through an uncovered cut or scrape, or through your mouth, nose, or eyes. If you are sensitive to a pesticide, it may make you sick immediately. It may also take several hours. Remember that people react differently, so smaller amounts may affect one person more seriously than another. 
If you notice that you sneeze, have a runny nose, and itchy, watery eyes when you're around a pesticide, it's possible that you're allergic to it. You can wear extra protective equipment, such as a respirator, to try to reduce the exposure. But if the symptoms continue in spite of your efforts, you may have to avoid the pesticide completely. Symptoms of exposure to pesticides may be skin rashes or irritation of your nose, throat, and eye tissues. You may also feel sick as if you're getting the flu with symptoms such as feeling sleepy, headaches or dizziness, feeling sweaty or clammy, vomiting, and muscle aches or cramps. Other more serious symptoms of pesticide exposure are drooling, blurred vision, troubled breathing, pinpoint pupils, and even passing out. And as with any chemical, there are possible delayed effects. Laboratory animal studies indicate that some pesticides may cause cancer, kidney or liver problems, or nervous system disorders. Pregnant women may run the risk of children with birth defects. What do I do if I get sick at work? Your employer has posted the doctor's address and phone number at a central location at your workplace. You should read the information on this poster. Also, know the location of the telephones at your work site. Your employer will get you to a doctor if you need medical help while working with pesticides. If you are unable to get to transportation, use the phone to call for emergency help to come get you. If you or a coworker gets sick, tell your supervisor immediately. If you feel that the sickness is because of pesticides, make sure your supervisor gives you or your doctor the name of the pesticide and the label. If a pesticide gets on your skin or clothes, take action immediately. Take off the affected clothing and rinse your skin with water in the decontamination area. Wash with soap and hot water as soon as possible and put on clean clothes. If you begin to feel sick or you begin to notice symptoms of poisoning, go to your doctor immediately. If you or a co-worker swallows a pesticide, get medical help immediately. Call the poison control center or doctor. Be sure to take the label with you. If you are unable to call for help or while you wait for help to arrive, follow the first aid directions on the label. These will be in the Statement of Practical Treatment section on the label. If you or a coworker begin to feel sick or dizzy while working in a closed area, such as a greenhouse, leave the area and get into fresh air immediately. Once outside, loosen all clothing around the chest and neck areas. If your coworker is not breathing, begin to perform CPR. Get to medical help as quickly as possible. If you notice a coworker having trouble breathing or passed out inside a closed area, get help as fast as you can, but don't go in unless you have the proper breathing equipment and are trained in using it. If you can't go inside, quickly call for your supervisor or a coworker who is trained and equipped to go inside. If you or a coworker gets pesticide in the eyes, immediately rinse the eyes with cool water for at least 15 minutes while holding the eyes open. Go to a doctor as soon as possible. Decontamination area. If an area in which you are working has been treated with pesticides and the REI has expired within the last 30 days, your employer must provide a decontamination area for your use. Simply put, a decontamination area is a place you routinely wash your hands and face before, during, and after work, as well as for emergency washing. Your employer must provide you with water, soap, and disposable towels. If you are a handler, this area has extra requirements that we will cover during the handler portion of this video. Pesticide information. If pesticides are used where you work, your employer must post pesticide safety information on the company bulletin board or at another location that is centrally located and easily accessible to all workers. The information must tell you exactly where and when the pesticide was applied, the restricted entry interval, and when you may enter that area again. Read the EPA poster and emergency medical information poster before you work in areas where pesticides have been applied. If you cannot read this information, ask your supervisor to read it to you. You must also receive extra training and personal protective equipment if you are to enter a field before the restricted entry interval is over. All of these rules were designed to protect you from harm. You cannot be fired or retaliated against for following them, and your employer must not try to prevent you from following them. 
Take an active role in your safety by following your company's safety policies, obeying the posted warning signs, and reading the information posted for your protection. The following portion of this video pertains to the pesticide handler. Those workers who do not mix, load, or apply pesticides may stop viewing now. In addition to the previous information, pesticide handlers must receive training on personal protective equipment, PPE, how to handle emergency situations involving pesticides such as spills, how to safely transport, load, mix, apply, and store pesticides, and how to safely operate the equipment used in the pesticide application process. You are a pesticide handler if you apply or assist with the application of pesticides, clean, repair, or maintain the application equipment, mix, load, or transfer pesticides into the application equipment, dispose of pesticides or materials with pesticides on them, act as a flagger, or perform other duties during a pesticide application or within a restricted entry interval. The pesticide label. The pesticide label contains all the information you need to properly use a pesticide. You should read it carefully before you begin work. If you can't read the label, have someone read it to you. All pesticide labels have emergency first aid information. This information is located in the Statement of Practical Treatment section of the label. When you look at the front of the label, you will see the brand name. It's important to know this name in case you or someone else becomes ill in which case you will need to give this label to the doctor. Below the brand name is a list of the active and inert ingredients. Active ingredients are those that kill or control the pest. Inert ingredients are those that help the product perform by helping it mix better, stick better to the plant, or some other way to help increase the pesticide's performance. Pesticides with similar brand names may contain different ingredients or different amounts of each ingredient. Read new product labels carefully, even if you recognize the brand. Also found on the front of the label is either the word danger, warning, or caution. These words are called signal words because they signal to you how poisonous a pesticide is if swallowed, inhaled, or absorbed into your body. The signal word caution is used for those pesticides that are least poisonous. The warning signal is used for those pesticides that are moderately poisonous. It wouldn't take much of the pesticide in this category to make you ill or bother your skin or eyes. Danger is the signal word used for pesticides that are the most poisonous. It would take a very small amount of a pesticide in this category to make you ill or cause a burn to expose skin or unprotected eyes. If you see a skull and crossbones and the word poison in red ink on the label along with the signal word danger, this means that the pesticide is a category one pesticide. These are the most poisonous pesticides and extreme care should be taken when working with them. When you work with category one pesticides, your employer must check on you every two hours during daytime to be sure you're all right. The statement of practical treatment contains first aid information. If you need medical treatment for pesticide exposure, be sure to take the label with you. The precautionary statement on the label tells you which parts of the body need extra protection. If you need extra eye or skin protection, you'll find those instructions under this section. The directions for use section provides information you need to have to store, dispose of, mix or apply the pesticide, as well as the agricultural use requirements that require you to use the pesticide only as directed on the label. Personal Protective Equipment, PPE. PPE is designed to protect you from coming into contact with pesticides. Your employer will provide you with the PPE you will need to do your job. PPE includes gloves, boots, or shoe covers, coveralls, hoods, or wide-brimmed hats, aprons, protective eyewear such as goggles, face shields or safety glasses with side and brow guards, and respirators. These items are worn in addition to your regular protective clothing consisting of long pants, long-sleeved shirts, and shoes and socks. PPE can be made from a variety of materials. If the pesticide label doesn't specify which materials to use, choose those that are chemical resistant. PPE made from PVC or rubber are good choices for gloves, footwear, aprons, and hats. 
PPE must be clean before you use it. Inspect your PPE daily for tears, holes, or other defects or signs of excessive wear. Advise your employer if any item needs to be replaced. To wear PPE properly and to ensure the maximum protection, follow these steps. Keep your pant legs over the top of your boots so pesticides cannot run down into your boots. Wear chemical-resistant gloves that reach at least halfway to your elbow. Avoid cotton or leather gloves and gloves with a cloth lining or wristband because these materials absorb pesticides instead of repel them. If you're applying pesticides on the ground, wear your sleeves over the outside of your gloves so pesticides cannot run down inside them. If you spray overhead, wear your sleeves inside your gloves. If you spray both at ground level and overhead, duct tape the tops of the gloves to your sleeves so pesticides cannot run inside either one. Wear a coverall over your regular work clothes to give your body extra protection. While mixing or loading pesticides, use a chemical-resistant apron to guard against splashes or spills. If your hood is separate from your coveralls, keep the bottom edge of the hood outside the coveralls. If you rip or tear your PPE or if it gets soaked with pesticides, stop working and replace it. If the pesticide gets through your skin, wash your skin with hot water and soap before putting on the clean PPE. Respirators. Respirators prevent you from breathing vapors, gases, or fine particles that could irritate your nose, throat, or lungs. The pesticide label will tell you if you must use a respirator. When a respirator is necessary, make sure that the MSHA NIOSH approval number on the respirator matches the number given on the label. Respirators must fit correctly, so if you have to wear one, you must be trained how to use it first. To work properly, Respirators must make a complete seal around your face so air cannot leak in or out. Most respirators won't protect you if you have a beard or other facial hair that loosens the seal. In this case, you can protect yourself by using helmet-style respirators that are designed to supply you with fresh air. Filters and cartridges should be replaced according to manufacturer's instructions or at the end of each workday. Filters or cartridges should be changed at once if you have trouble breathing through them if you smell odors, or if your throat feels scratchy. Transporting Pesticides If you're responsible for transporting pesticides, you must securely fasten the containers to the truck or trailer to prevent them from falling or spilling out during movement. Containers must not be put in the same place as people, food, or feed. If the pesticide containers are made from paper or cardboard, or something that will soak up moisture and fall apart, they must be covered with a waterproof cover to keep them from getting wet. When transporting pesticides, remember to take cleanup materials with you. Don't try to clean up a spill unless you have the proper PPE and cleanup material with you. If a spill should happen, call for help, then control the spill by turning the container upright if it is tipped over, or put a leaking container inside another container. Contain the spill area by making a mound around the edges and warn others nearby so they won't walk through it. Clean up the spill with absorbent materials such as sand, clay, or cat litter. Never use water as it will make the problem worse by spreading it. Sweep the sand or cat litter into plastic bins or special drums and ask your supervisor how to dispose of them. The pesticide label may contain information about disposal. If you're unsure what to do, call your supervisor immediately and guard the area until your supervisor arrives. Storing Pesticides Always follow the label directions for storing pesticides. Pesticides must be stored in properly labeled containers with the label clearly visible. Never store pesticides in old bottles or food containers where they could be mistaken for food or drink for people or animals, and never store labeled containers near food, feed, or seed. Keep storage areas locked when not in use. Store pesticides in containers that have no leaks, breaks, or tears. Store containers away from freezing temperatures or extreme heat. Make sure all containers are closed tightly and are stored upright. Some pesticide labels may require that the pesticide be stored under lock and key. Check the label for this requirement. Mixing and loading pesticides. 
Mixing and loading pesticides requires extra caution and protection because the pesticides are in a concentrated form. Before you begin to mix the pesticide, read the label. Put on the PPE the label requires. Mix the pesticide outdoors where there's good ventilation and light. Stand upwind of the pesticide to avoid the possibility of any drifting onto you. When opening pesticide bags, use a sharp knife or scissors specifically labeled for pesticides only and be sure to wash it in soap and hot water before returning it to its storage place. Never try to tear the bag open and never use your personal knife or scissors. Measure accurately using a proper measuring tool. Don't guess and don't use more than the label recommends. When pouring the concentrated pesticide, hold the container below eye level to avoid splashing any into your face and eyes. When you add water to the mix tank or the spray tank, don't let the pesticide mix run back through the hose and into the water source. Keep the end of the hose slightly above the liquid level in the tank. Never mix, load, or clean equipment near ponds, streams, wells, or ditches because rinse water containing pesticides could overflow and run into these water sources. Cleaning pesticide containers. Empty pesticide containers should be thoroughly rinsed before they're thrown away. Follow the label directions for cleaning and disposing of empty pesticide containers. To rinse a container thoroughly, you can use one of two methods. First, if you used water to mix the pesticide in the mixing tank, you can fill the container one quarter full of clean water and replace the cap. Shake or roll the container so the water rinses the inside completely. Pour the rinse water into the mixing tank and repeat the steps at least two more times. Follow your employer's instructions for throwing away the rinsed container. Instead of triple rinsing, you can pressure rinse containers by putting a pressure rinse nozzle into the container and turning the nozzle in all directions for at least 30 seconds. Drain the container into the mix tank. Follow your company's rules for throwing away the rinsed container. If the empty pesticide container cannot be rinsed, empty it as well as you can and then close the lid tightly. Empty containers should be kept under lock and key until they are disposed of. Applying pesticides. If you follow these guidelines during pesticide application, you will increase your ability to control the pest and will make your job much safer for you and those around you. Before you begin to apply any pesticide, have on the required PPE. Carefully check your application equipment for leaking hoses or connections, plugged or worn nozzles, and examine the filter to be sure that it's clean. Never use your mouth to clear a clogged nozzle or spray line. Adjust the equipment to get the right amount of liquid coming out. When you're ready to start, check your work area and clear all livestock, pets, and people from the area. Apply pesticides only as directed on the label, at the right time, and under favorable weather conditions. Never apply pesticides if the wind will cause the pesticide to drift out of the area. Be aware of any ponds, streams, or other water sources in the area, and be careful to keep the pesticides from coming near them. Also, check the environmental hazard statement on the label to avoid harming birds, bees, or wildlife that may be in the area you plan to treat. Heat stress. Heat stress can happen when the weather is very warm and you're working in the sun, especially when you're wearing all of your protective equipment. Your body may have a difficult time cooling itself down sufficiently. Heat stress symptoms are similar to pesticide poisoning symptoms in that you may feel tired and weak have a headache or feel ill or dizzy. The differences, however, are that with heat stress, the mouth and eyes are dry, the heart rate is high, and the pupils are enlarged. These are just the opposite of the pesticide poisoning symptoms. Sometimes a person suffering from heat stress will act confused or angry and begin to behave strangely. If you see any of these symptoms in your coworkers, act quickly. Immediately move the person into the shade and remove as much outer clothing as possible. Begin to pour cool water over the person and fan them. Keep pouring on cool water and fanning them while you get the person to the doctor. When the weather is hot, try doing jobs that require PPE in the early morning when the weather is cooler. Drink plenty of water during the day, especially if you're sweating, and take frequent breaks. 
Cleaning up. When you finish the application, clean your equipment according to your company's instructions. Keep your PPE on until your equipment is clean and put away. When you're ready to take off your PPE, try not to let it make contact with your skin or inner clothing. If possible, keep your gloves on while you remove your other PPE. Wash your gloves in hot water with soap while you're still wearing them before removing them. If you have to remove your gloves to remove other PPE, try to touch the outsides as little as possible. Wash your hands, face, and other exposed skin with plenty of hot water and soap. Put all your dirty PPE in an area by itself until it can be cleaned or disposed of. Don't take home any unclean PPE. If you're responsible for cleaning your PPE, do it safely and correctly. First, wear rubber gloves and hand wash the inside and outside of your work gloves, boots, and respirator face pieces in hot soapy water and rinse well. Most coveralls and aprons can be machine washed. Equipment that cannot be cleaned should be thrown away. These items include respirator filters or cartridges, disposable gloves, shoe coverings, and disposable coveralls. As we mentioned in the first half of this program, wash your work clothes separate from your family laundry. Tell anyone who washes your clothes for you that there may be pesticides on them and to use caution when handling them. Decontamination area. When doing pesticide handling tasks, your employer must provide you with an area where you can wash your hands and face and do any emergency washing that may be necessary. This area must be available as long as you are doing any pesticide handler job and should also be used at the end of your workday to wash off your PPE. A clean change of clothes, such as a coverall, must be available to you in case your work clothes become contaminated and must be removed. For your information, your employer has selected a medical doctor where you will be treated in case of emergency. The name, location, and phone number must be posted in an easily seen place at your job. Before you are permitted to handle any pesticide, you must receive training in personal protective equipment, first aid procedures, and other important information about pesticides. Conclusion Working safely around pesticides is important to your health and to the health of your environment. Take an active role in your safety by obeying all company safety policies, wearing all required protective equipment, and asking questions when you have doubts. If you have any questions about working around pesticides, please ask your supervisor now.